Back in March of 2011, the University of Nebraska Omaha decided to move from the Division II to the Division I level when they announced they were joining the Summit League. Athletic director Trev Alberts had to make tough decisions when making the move, and the wrestling team, which was coming off three straight national titles, and the football team, which was on the rise, ended up being collateral damage. This is the complicated story of Nebraska Omaha dropping football which was requested by some of you in the comment section below. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm planning to release a video every day from now until Christmas. Also, let me know what type of videos y'all want me to do in the comment section below. Throughout their football history, the University of Nebraska Omaha won 13 conference titles across five different conferences, beginning to play football in 1911, made it to the Division II playoffs 10 times, and won over 440 games. In 1984, they made it to the semifinals of the Division II playoffs, losing to North Dakota State, and had their best season in school history back in 2007 when they finished the year 10-1 under head coach Patrick Burns. Burns took over as head coach in 1994, and put together a 124-68 record as head coach. Yet, only a few years after a period of dominance from 2004 to 2008, the program would come to an end as collateral damage with the Mavericks moving to the Division I level. The program had a storied history with a lot of success, but it would have a heartbreaking end. When talks began about Omaha possibly moving up to the Division I level, Athletic Director Trev Alberts told the team that, that plans were to bring them up as well. So players were committing to play for the school and signing letters of intent with the belief they could be playing at the next level and were going to be crucial parts in helping the school develop another strong program in the state of Nebraska. When Alberts took over at Omaha, the athletic department was in bad shape and many wondered whether the school would drop athletics as a whole. Poor mismanagement and a revolving door of athletic directors led to a lack of accountability and Alberts was going to need to make a few tough business decisions. With those decisions, the people aspect of college sports was forgotten. Max Dennis decided to enroll at the University of Nebraska Omaha in 2007, even though it meant paying out-of-state tuition with not even a partial athletic scholarship. He paid over $80,000 to go to school, but would lose his senior year of eligibility because of the school ending the program. Dennis spoke on the announcement that Omaha would no longer have football telling ESPN, I was stunned. I didn't know what to think because there was no mention of anything before that. I could have gone to a cheaper school. The reason I came to this school was so I could play football. Along with football coming to an end, Omaha also announced that they were ending their wrestling program as well, who was coming off their third straight Division II national title. Nebraska Omaha was moving from the Mid-American Intercollegiate Athletic Association to the Summit League, which did not sponsor football or wrestling. Alberts felt that Omaha could not financially support football and wrestling, with the move, but according to ESPN, that statement was not fully true. Paula Levine wrote back in May of 2011, analysis of various financial statements and studies by Outside the Lines and economist Andy Schwarz shows discrepancies in Omaha's number and raises the question about predictions that the university will fare better financially in Division I without two programs. Alberts had played linebacker at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln and had only been Omaha's athletic director for two years when the decision was made. Fans were angry with the decision begging the school to rethink it, but the school failed to be transparent about anything and rejected a request to interview by the outside the lines at the time. Alberts said football was losing the school $1.3 million a year, but that is not what the financial statement given to the NCAA was saying. According to public records, the program was only in the red by $50,500 and the wrestling program was in the black, bringing in $143,000 during its last season. According to ESPN, Alberts did not include the $1.2 million that the football program received from student fees and direct funds from the university. Alberts said there was going to be a slide in support for football and the athletic department in general, which former players disagreed with as they watched the university grow leaps and bounds. Schwarz told ESPN, they're extremely typical in sort of mistakes they're making. It's sort of a fundamental mark of bad accounting, that they just don't have the revenues and expenses to match. They're charging themselves expenses and not accounting for revenues in the way they should. The university was charging the football team for their 36 scholarships, but were not including the tuition players were paying who were not on scholarship. An outside consulting firm felt the university was being too optimistic that men's hockey would be able to make up the money lost from football and wrestling. 
ESPN wrote, the Summit League doesn't sponsor hockey, so the sport competes in a different Division I conference, the Western Collegiate Hockey Association. Competing in different Division I conferences was a possibility for football and wrestling as well. But the Summit League commissioner, Tom Duppel, points out that if the university kept those sports and didn't add others, it would only have three men's programs competing in the league. Instead, the University of Nebraska-Omaha planned to use the money previously spent on football and wrestling to add soccer and golf, which are Summit League sports. They also were dropping the two sports to help with Title IX compliance, but the numbers they used to justify it were inaccurate. The university said they had 143 players on the football team, when in reality they only had 120 according to coaches, and according to the federal government, they only had 112 reported. If Title IX was truly the issue, they only needed to cut their roster by 50 players to add soccer and golf. Schwarz said it's a university's prerogative to cut sports it doesn't want anymore. But he said to argue that football and wrestling had to go because they were costing too much money is disingenuous or the result of poor accounting. Coaches and players were never roped into the conversation and the university threatened the coaches severance pay if they spoke out against the school's decision. Wrestling coach Mike Denny got the word about his program around 11 p.m. on March 12th, when Alberts called him just hours after the team won the Division II national title for the third year in a row. The football coaches had heard about it just a couple hours earlier as rumors spread through text messages from people who said they had already read about it online. Denny told ESPN, I said to treat us the way you're treating us is treating us like trash. And you know, you can just wad us up and throw us in the trash can. If you keep treating people like this within your organization, it's not going to work. It won't work. It was a slap in the face to Denny who had been there for 32 years, while Burns had been there for 16 years at the time. Denny thought that if they were involved with the conversation, that they could have garnered financial support to save the programs. Many felt the real reason for ending the program was because of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, who was also in the process of joining the Big Ten at the time. Many involved with the football program felt the Cornhuskers were threatened by losing walk-ons who would choose to play for Omaha instead, but Nebraska disputed this claim, saying they had nothing to do with it. Alberts was in line to replace Tom Osborne when he retired as Nebraska's athletic director, and the decision to move a school from Division II to Division I was good for his resume. When Omaha was making the move to move to Division I, 10 D2 programs had made the same jump, but none had dropped any programs to make the move. Players were excited about the move as they heard rumors, but then they had their hearts broken when they had the rugs pulled on their career with no communication from anybody. Former player Troy Cush told Omaha News, it went from pure joy and exhalation to being more upset and hurt and confused I've ever been in my entire life. Despite attempts to get the university to change the decision, the Nebraska Board of Regents voted unanimously to move further with their decision to drop football and wrestling and move onward to rebranding the Mavericks as a Division I program. While Omaha saved their athletic department after years of mismanagement by former athletic directors who jumped ship before being held accountable, the lack of clarity to the football and wrestling athletes and coaches was something that was disgusting when it went down and the scars were only cut deeper when Alberts was named Nebraska's athletic director years later. What do you think? Should Nebraska Omaha have kept wrestling in football? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.